we haven't really asked the services what they want, what are the products that they want, what are the products that they're willing to buy, what is the problem that they're trying to solve. I think we're, we are looking at solving our problems rather than their problems, who is really the end customer. So I strongly believe that as long as we have a good view of what the end problem is, what the, what, what the technology that is actually required, then there is enough talent to build world-class products in India, and you, you alluded to some of those examples. So, so also, I think as an extension of that is we're in a unique position because the nature, at least as I understand it, the nature of warfare, for example, is changing quite significantly. Uh, you know, the emphasis on electronic communications, the emphasis on things like radars, the emphasis on uh, 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 unmanned uh, 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 vehicles is quite significant at this point. I mean, there is a technological shift because we're not, you know, today, uh, if you look at it, and, and, and even five years ago in a, in, a, in a conference like this, China and Pakistan would have come up by now 20 times, right, relevance or not. But I think the nature itself of, of what we're trying to solve is changing quite dramatically going forward. So the takeaway to me in that is, when there is disruption, because the nature of the needs, be it you know, from, from just from, say, large combat vehicles is really changing into something a little different around the intellect and the intelligence and the software and the technology and so on and so forth. It's no longer around you know, um, um, who has sort of the biggest plane or who has the, the most powerful tank. It's really about how efficiently can you really use your, your equipment. I think that gives us a very unique opportunity to build IP, that build technology that addresses that challenge. I think that uh, uh, shift, if we can really address that, that gives us a unique position because ultimately I, I strongly believe that again, you know, hopefully we're a, we're a fairly efficient capital market and what happens ultimately is that the best product wins out, right? And, 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 and you know, as a taxpayer and as a citizen, I would want the best product to be out there uh, being used by, by our armed forces. And that will only happen when we really take the view that, you know, uh, basis the technology that exists in India, basis the competence that exists in India, we are going to design and develop the best products for, for, for the Indian market and, and maybe to extend that to what Ashok had alluded to this morning for the global market. So I think uh, uh, as, as just an extension of that in my last point is we also can't just target the Indian market because all these businesses are scale businesses. Right? You're, you're only going to get efficiency when we can build a certain amount of scale. And that scale will also come when we look at not just you know, the Indian defense, but also the applicability of that technology to other industries, because that gives you a fair amount of scale. You know, A lot of things that happen around uh, uh, optical systems are also very relevant to other industries, uh, um, such as medical imaging, for example, borrows a lot from uh, what was originally developed by DARPA for uh, defense applications. So unless we take a little bit of a wider view that you know, the technology that we develop will be relevant for, 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 for a multitude of markets, I think we're limiting ourselves quite significantly. But the opportunity is there because there is a significant amount of disruption in, in how the world is evolving and therefore what the needs are. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Krishna. I think from uh, what he said, uh, the points I could capture are like, Firstly, the transparency regarding the requirements from the services. If there is more clarity on that, it is difficult for it is easy for industry to plan uh, a long-term strategy about the areas in which they can focus and invest in R&D, so that it will be useful to the country and the services. The number two point he is trying to say is uh, like uh, the application of this R&D in the civilian uh, sector also. If it is there, then uh, uh, then it's a good balance, and then whatever efforts are uh, put in this development of products for defence can be leveraged by building applications for the civilian sector. But now the it the works other way also. There are some products which are actually developed for uh, civilian applications. They can also be leveraged by uh, military for its own applications. In instead of reinventing the wheel, you can come the other way also. Uh, the, the third point, uh, uh, like as you said, uh, one point, important point is that there are some things where uh, there is a, uh, a kind of secrecy where, for example, cryptography, uh, it is to be done by PSUs and uh, it should be SAG approved and things like that. 
now in the world it is more of software defined cryptography you know the not the kind of old uh, uh, standards of boxes being attached and uh, you know and that box should come from somewhere we don't know the interface details in the last minute and even after supplying the product for 2 uh, 3 years after that also there is that cryptography equipment will not come and uh, because there is a approval problem or uh, uh, you know uh, 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 and the compatibility issues so what is happening is it's not becoming an integral part of the equipment being supplied to the services so the security itself is compromised because of the urgency operational urgency the induct the equipment but the security part because it is dealt with by uh, some other psus where uh, uh, the they make the sag approved uh, cryptographic devices which will interact with our uh, equipment so there is a lot of delay in inducting them even if they are inducted they are not interoperable so when they want to have really network enabled capability or network centric operations between different platforms there should be a holistic view that should be taken at the security level for the communication between different platforms which i think is uh, sir uh, is a matter of concern because uh, I, i am dealing with different platforms uh, ship submarines and uh, aircraft to enable communication between all the three the major challenge and impediment is the appropriate interoperable security uh, overlay on the top of the communication network this is uh, one of the challenges uh, that should be uh, the uh, services should be more open and discuss and then come out with a, a kind of uh, a white paper or a or a direction to the industry in this regard uh, a request for it. Uh, I'll uh, take a in a slightly different view of this. Uh, I won't talk about the process itself. No, having been in startup since uh, 18 years now, uh, since 1999, we founded three companies, and you know between these three companies, we have probably uh, have had almost about uh, 40 IPRs, patents issued, international patents issued. Uh, intelli- intelligence, actually, what I realized is intelligence is not a is a necessary condition for uh, innovation not not sufficient so you will see uh, I, i guess here in the panel itself right on maybe it's a little pompous to call us you know call us as innovators but if you see there are no no it guys here right? <laughs> at least the beta guys <laughs> so so uh, it, that itself i i realize is not a uh, is not an important criteria what is important also is you know uh, the passion to do stuff and uh, the third thing that we have seen so far is the ability to stay uh, focused on the problem a lot of times you know innovation i mean you you, you can't say i'm going to do innovation and you you, you get it right you you have to uh, you have to work on the problem day and night and suddenly you might, you know you you get innovation in the most unexpected place right when when you don't want it at all so it's uh, it's it's a it's a it's actually a lifestyle if you ask me uh, it's not and and i think a lot of people have valued it to that uh, our whole entire our entire system the education system itself doesn't uh, uh, you know prop up this kind of attitude uh, it actually kills people uh, you know who have imagination and and a lot of our technical education actually ends up making what i call uh, analytical morons they are very good at uh, excel sheets uh, very very analytical but uh, you know that that's not sufficient uh, that's one part the other part that people miss out very often when we talk about ipr or innovation is uh, the fact that innovation and failure are interlinked right and uh, you you go you go to fail so you can't you can't get an auditor to say i mean you uh, uh, say why this failed right you you spend probably you might even end up spending uh, few billions and billions of dollars and yet not be successful at that point in time but the overall learning that you get from it actually could result in larger uh, uh, you know uh, larger ipas later on so that's one of the <clears throat> one of the reasons what inhibits uh, you know innovation innovation in india one of the examples that i'll cite is you know a lot of times the the processes are well intentioned i think uh, everybody talked about in the morning i'll give you one example uh, dit department of electronics has a scheme that uh, they subsidize patents if you have patents uh, so in one particular and they have a 15 page document 
I don't know how much this, how much time this spent. Uh, to uh, subsidize about 50% of your uh, cost of a, of a patent. So uh, we have one of our patents which we applied for in the US. Generally, uh, to answer the Vidya Sagar's question in the morning, right about patents, uh, what you do is you simultaneously apply in India and in the US if you have the money. <laughs> so what happens is the US patent comes earlier, uh, five years at least earlier than the uh, than the India patent. So. Uh, so here we go to uh, the dietary committee, uh, eight people, uh, you know, spend half a day and we make presentations on a patent which is two lakh rupees, right, and try and get one lakh. They say, you know, this thing is too fundamental, you can't patent this, somebody else would have already done it. So there is this mindset also uh, inside inside uh, the country for whatever reason that, you know, you can't create IPR in India, you can't do fundamental stuff sitting out of India. And that's one of the big challenges that, that I, have, I have faced. And finally, uh, all this, uh, unfortunately, apart from probably uh, e-commerce and software, pure play software, uh, IPR, I think uh, especially defense and uh, you know electronics and I, I don't know, I, I can't speak of mechanical, but mostly the, the systems are so complex today that you need a lot of money to su sustain these innovations. Where is the money coming from? So you could uh, you could go on. Uh, I mean, uh, you could you could have the best of the guys, but if you don't have the innovation, you know, you uh, sorry, if you don't have the uh, funding or the money to uh, to actually sustain this innovation, there's no way we're going to get any IPR, right? One of the other uh, uh, examples I'll cite from ourselves. It's I I, I don't know I I. I yeah. I, I don't know. I don't have anything on the top of head, right? It is this is a this is like I said. It's a mindset change, and uh, like uh, the honourable RM said today morning, you keep repeating that to yourself and day in and day out. It's you you start off by you know kind of programming yourself, and there's no real process as such, right? Uh, to to do this, one of the things that we can do is uh, of course there's a lot of uh, work going on in terms of trying to uh, uh, you know trying to cut down the procedures and and also and basically you have to let let a few failures happen, and there have to be. See, for for a for one large uh, say a Google to emerge out of India, you can't have five companies just doing innovation, right? We have to have thousands of companies doing innovation. Then you have a uh, chance that you know it's like this. I see uh, this in this uh, Discovery TV. If you see a crocodile when it's born, right? It's only this much. So so that's why even in nature, the crocodile there are thousands of eggs of crocodile. One of those thousands actually end up being a 25 foot uh, monster. So I think to get that, you have to create this. Uh, create this environment. I think there are there are steps now being taken uh, to start first programming the mind, right? And I think uh, some of the procedures will follow later. Uh, maybe I talked a little too generic, but uh, thank you for that. I think you are uh, focusing more on creativity, imagination, and uh, which is more important uh, than uh, the know how and all. Basically, he's trying to uh, give focus more on know why than know how. Uh, I'm sure know why is more important.